because uh, What's Up Line is active and you can go on Facebook and just type Joy Prime and start sending in your comments and suggestions in our comment section. Uh, now, uh, this particular conversation would be very, very, very interactive and very interesting uh, for those of you who are interested in autism spectrum. Now, uh, one thing I noticed is that, um, well, I chanced on is that WHO has estimated that one in every 160 children are affected with autism spectrum. And in Ghana, about 37.8% of children under the age of 14 are affected by that. My guess says that, you know, the awareness for autism needs to be out there the more because it's not enough. We need to learn about this. And so she has written a book. We are going to talk about it. But first, we're going to get a little bit personal with her and what drove her to write this book. Uh, she's in the person of Mrs. Harriet Iwa Agbenowu, founding director, Sparkless Foundation UK and Ghana, and deputy head teacher, Wensor UK. Good morning. Morning. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for having me on the show. Thank you for being here. Now, tell us a little bit about you. Who is Mrs. <laughs> Harriet Iwa Agbeno? Um, I'm just a woman. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I suppose I'd say a girl who was really interested in working with children right from my infancy. Um, I was a Sunday school teacher, um, had quite a lot of passion for children, but I never... I never ever in my life imagined that I'll be dealing with children with okay. special needs and disability or um, that my own children will be on the spectrum. Mm. That was not part of the plan, um, but it happened. How many As children do you have? I've got three children. And how many? Um, you have and two of them are on the spectrum. Okay. Yeah. Um, so at this particular point in my life, yeah. this has shaped me into yeah. who I am. Right. Um, Professionally and personally, I'm the mother of three adorable children, two on the spectrum, who have they've taught me so much. How old are life. they? My oldest will be 15 in September, mm. and the twins will be 13. So um, you've got twins? Of, yes. Okay. Yeah. So one of the twins is on the spectrum, wow. and my oldest is on the spectrum. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, They're both boys. Is that, is, that, is that what gave you the motivation to write the book? Yes. All right. Yes, yes. So that was the start of our story. Um, when my oldest was diagnosed, I realized suddenly that I did not have a clue about autism. Yeah. I did not have a clue about special educational needs, mm -hmm. about disability, um, in terms of neurodiversity. Mm. So it was time to learn, um, which is what they teach us every day. With, with neurodiversity and autism and managing children with special needs, you need to be open to be constantly learning. As a parent, as a professional, as a health practitioner, you need mm. to be open to knowing more so that you can support them. Because neurodiversity is, it's, it's not a disease, it's a different way of presentation. It's different thought patterns, different ways of seeing things, understanding things. So it's different from autism? So um, autism, autism is mm -hmm. one of the examples of neurodiversity. Okay. So when we talk about neurodiversity, it is different conditions. And um, some people will use the word disorder, but I prefer mm. the word conditions because this disorder sort of connotates a, a negative right. meaning as though there's a problem yeah. with the person, yeah. even though it's not their fault. They were born the way mm. they were. So um, autism is just one of the many neurodiversities we have. So, for example, there is ADHD. I'm not sure mm. if people have heard of this, but mm. that's when you could talk about hyperactivity and attention and deficit yeah. um, symptoms. Yeah. Um, there, there, are, there is um, global developmental delay, mm. we've got um, fetal alcohol syndrome, we've got Tourette syndrome, um, Williams syndrome. There are quite a, lot. a number of yeah. neurodiversities with different ways of presentation. Okay. So autism is one of these and it's got specific characteristics which you can use to identify each of these types of neurodiversities. So for example, with autism, 
um, you talk about, you, you can spot three things. There are issues with social interaction and communication. Right. So that's um, one of them. And then there is um, there are challenges with executive functioning. So that's the person's ability to organize themselves, plan, um, start and complete tasks, mm -hmm. know how to manage their time. Mm -hmm. So that, that is executive functioning. So mm -hmm. someone on the spectrum might struggle yeah. with aspects of this in different ways. Um, and there is also something called flexibility of thought so they can be quite rigid in the way they think um, you might find a child with very very fixed interest they might be interested in one thing and they'll keep doing that thing over and over and over mm. it could be an interest in a short video clip but they can play that over and over and over okay. because they enjoy it it might be a particular toy it might be arranging things in a certain way one of the common ones people are familiar with is the fact that they like to arrange things in a line mm. but that's just one of them. It basically means that they can have a very fixated interest once they decide to focus on, on something. Mm. Um, and um, the fourth thing that you can identify when it comes to autism is um, sensory difficulties. Okay. So they may be hypersensitive or they may be hypo sensitive so hypersensitivity is when they want um, a lot more of the sensory inputs around them than your um, your 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 typical child so for example someone might want a lot of um, they may have a high tolerance for certain noise levels yeah. or heat or temperature mm -hmm. so it's all about the senses mm -hmm. what they can taste what they can um, what they can see how they feel so um, Potentially, someone could have interest in very strong taste. My youngest, for example, he, he is very, very interested in foods which are very um, hot in terms of okay. chili, chili content chili, yeah. or things which are sour. He's got, he's got a tolerance for that, so he'll seek those things because that feeds his sensory need, that particular okay. sensory need. Okay. Um, he's also, um, and this is one of the things that I've, I've talked about to quite some length in the book um, because areas are, it, it has a huge and significant impact on awareness of danger and safety right. so for example he would try to poke his hand yeah, in the flame tell, because yeah, he can't tell this is dangerous that despite is not dangerous. how hot it is yes. Yeah. He, 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 he can't quite figure out, he's seeking a sensory input right. without realizing that he could actually get hurt. Yeah. He might try to drink, um, to, to drink a substance that's got a very, very strong taste. He could mm. be detergent mm. in the house just because he's seeking that input. You know, he might try to jump from a height because he wants to sense that, that, that feeling of going from a high level to <clears throat> a low level. But that all comes with safety issues. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. the sensory needs of children with autism, that's one thing that's really, 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 really important mm. because it does have an impact on keeping them safe, mm. teaching them to know how to keep themselves safe. But also at the same time, um, it's one of the key things that um, will determine how they react and behave throughout the day everyday life um, and it can even go to the point of having a negative impact on behavior if that's not managed properly right so if you know that these are the sensory needs of your child you need to make sure that throughout the day you are finding ways to meet those needs so he's seeking certain tastes you make sure that you factor that into your meals into their snacks into the kind of drinks that mm. you provide for them mm -hmm. so that those needs are naturally being met as part of their everyday routine instead of them seeking it yeah. and then finding it yeah. in a different way that's yeah. not monitored yeah. or risk assessed. Yeah. 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 Um, but once you know, you can then plan their day in such yeah. a way that they are having those needs. Mm -hmm. If you know your child enjoys the sense of jumping and being active, mm -hmm. you can factor in some trampolining, you can factor in okay. some um, okay. um, skipping, okay. you can factor yeah. in um, any activities that provide that sensory input they need, whether it's um, going on a swing, using slides, um, running around for a little bit for a couple of minutes, you know, different things that you can easily access and these things don't have to be expensive. You know, yeah. you know, um, we, I have encountered quite a number of parents who um, have children uh, with this condition mm. and um, it, it seems like it takes them away from living life, if that's the way I should put it, because you have to put in 
everything for the child. Yeah. And the problem of having both parents present to help out with developing or helping the child to grow. Yeah. How, has, how have you been able to put your life together, do what you're doing, you know, to uh, raise these children? How is the contribution of your husband also in all of this? That's a very, a very good question. I get that question a lot. Um, and the first thing that I always say, I'm, I'm a Christian person, I'm a Christian. So the first thing I always say is that it's just by God's grace. I don't know how I managed to get to this point. Because when I started this journey, I, 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 I felt lost. I had no idea how I was going to survive because it's very intense. Um, my two boys, both of them have gone, um, they're, they're on the pre end of the spectrum. So they do need a what lot of okay. adult support. So the pre end of the spectrum is when they're not speaking. Okay. They can't com um, verbally communicate their needs through words. Right. But they have other ways of communicating okay. through gestures, um, by using their iPads to indicate okay. what they need because okay. they have got a communication app okay. that they can tap on and it, it says what okay. they need for them. But mm. they are not verbal and they can't tell you when they have specific needs. Mm. So... Um, it's, it's, it's been quite um, tricky trying to figure all of those things out. And it's, it's, it's been a journey. I, I started by, first of all, learning, learning about autism, learning about what it means, the implication for my children, um, the implication for us as a family yeah. and what we need to do. So my husband and I educated ourselves. Mm -hmm. That was the very first thing. Um, and taking ownership of the fact that this is our journey, this is into the responsibility of some professional. It's not the responsibility of their school. They do have a part to play in the process, but primarily it's, it's our the responsibility yeah. as a parent. Yeah. There's a reason why we got given these children. There's a reason, and I, I'm saying this a lot more confidently now, but I never felt like that from the beginning. Oh, you know, yeah. my question was, why? <laughs> why, why me? Yeah, you yeah. know, that's, that, that's what's my initial um, thought. But with time, I came to realize that there is, there is a reason. Mm -hmm. And somehow the fact that as a family, we've managed to get, from, get ourselves from that point mm -hmm. to this point mm -hmm. where we have gained a certain level of understanding, right. where we're in a position to support other people. Okay. That, that, that sort of um, tells me that, that that's probably the reason why, mm -hmm. because perhaps we can handle it more than another family or okay. more than another couple. Okay. Um, and the, the second question you asked mm -hmm. about my husband, yeah. I mean, I can't say enough. I think I'm very fortunate. Right. To have someone who has a good understanding of, um, as a person of issues, he's quite empathetic to people who struggle in life, okay. naturally, as okay. a person. So I think when, when, when we had our own children, it sort of made things a whole lot easier. Mm. Um, and he's an amazing father to, to the boys. Right. I mean, he's, he's had them for the last few weeks you know, while I've been here, while I've been in Ghana, mm. um, and he's doing a fantastic job. Right. Yeah, so um, it's, it's, it's quite sad when I come across families where yeah. Yeah. they're not getting Especially the input in Ghana, for... It's yeah, a lot. I've, I've heard a lot. a lot of stories. Sometimes right. the mum leaves, yes. sometimes the dad leaves, yes. and that's quite unfortunate. It makes the work even harder, yes. you know, because it's hard enough as it is without one parent having to bear the, the, the entire burden. Yeah. Um, so I would encourage parents, you know, it's not the end of the world when your child gets diagnosed with autism or another condition that you may not be familiar with. It's not the end of the world. Our children are capable of having an amazing life. And as a family, you, you, it's very possible for you to have a really, really, really good life, mm. regardless of how it looks from the beginning. Mm. There are things which can be done practical things practical that can be things. done that okay. you can put in place and mentally psychologically yeah. how you, you you tune yourself you know to see life mm. you've, you've got to realize that despite the fact that this isn't what i was hoping for this wasn't the plan this is now my package this is what i've now got to do you take the steps to make sure that you achieve Mm. what needs to be What's, achieved right. for your own self and for your children. Okay. And these are all areas that I've, I've addressed in the book, how you meet the needs of your child mm -hmm. specifically. Mm -hmm. um, 
uh, throughout the day, okay. um, right from the time of even um, we, 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 in the book, the book talks about diagnosis, how you even notice the symptoms while they are still very tiny, because there are symptoms that you can notice when they are babies okay. or when they are toddlers. Okay. There are ways of sporting these symptoms. Um, and you talk and about all that in the book. All of this is, um, is, is shared in the book, okay. um, what you can do about it, the mm. kind of support, because there are times when early intervention, what we call early intervention, that's when you notice certain things and you do um, you do something about it by a certain time right yeah and and a lot of times when you do that you begin to see um, positive results or changes in those areas you begin to see improvements in some of those areas um, if you put in the effort, the effort right. to, to do certain things early right. it's got right. to be early I always mm -hmm. advise for people to target early intervention from the time they notice um, um, as a toddler to about seven years those are the most productive years for early intervention so do whatever you can, seek the professional support. And you as a parent, make sure that you're working with the child consistently at and when, home. And when you're able to detect it early, can something be done about it? Something can be done about some of the symptoms you see, because it means that you can then put in strategies that would help the child cope a lot Faster better or with those are, areas, yeah, right. and that that means that as they grow, mm. they become more confident in being able to um, demonstrate other attributes and okay. apply those okay. skills to other areas. Right. So potentially, that they then become a bit more independent in life. They become more able to do certain things without fully depending on you all the time, because the thing is, autism is a, it's a lifelong. Yeah. developmental yeah. Um, yeah. condition. Mm -hmm. It's not something that disappears when you grow. Mm. Um, there's a saying that a child with autism will grow up to become an adult with autism. It doesn't disappear from the system. We talk a lot about children with autism, but we forget that those children are growing to become mm -hmm. adults with autism. Yeah. Um, so I've, I've noticed there isn't much talk about adults on the spectrum yeah. in our community, yeah. but th that's, that's a gap that we need to be addressing in terms of the um, social justice and right. how we meet those right. needs. Because um, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a big picture. It's not just about knowing what autism is, but what are we doing for them while they are children? What are we doing for them as they grow into adulthood? What mm -hmm. are we doing for them in terms of um, a bit, um, preparing them for life, for work, You know, preparing them to be able to live as independently as possible? Mm -hmm. For example, you have a child, a three-year-old child, who depends on you for you to shower them, to bathe them, to feed them. So when they are 20 years old, do you still want to be doing those exact same things as a oh. mother? If you've got a, a boy, will you be still showering your 20-year-old yeah, 20 20 man, old, right. brushing his teeth yeah. for him, mm. wiping up after him after mm. he uses the loo? Mm. No. You know, you don't want to be doing that for the sake of their dignity. It, yes. It's just wrong, yes. you know. So what you need to be doing is putting measures in place right from when they are children to teach them these things so that by the time they get to that age, they would have the skills and the confidence to be able to do these things independently. And that gives them a much better quality of life. Okay. I'm just going to say that that's very important because a lot of people do not realize this, but children with autism may take much longer to learn some of the things that are neurotypical. That's your child without autism. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, the, the term that we use is neurotypical. neurotypical. Means that, um, yeah. they, 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 they do not have autism or mm. other neurodiversities. Mm. So um, a, a, a child with autism is likely to take much longer to learn those same skills that um, their sibling who doesn't have autism would learn in a very short mm. space of time. Mm -hmm. um, my daughter, she was potty trained by, by two. She was using the loo independently. Mm. Her brothers took up to seven years okay. or eight years. Okay. So if you're not careful, you may end up with an adult who's still in nappies. Right. And it's not because they are not clever, but it sometimes it's got to do with issues such as the sensory issues I talked about. Mm. They may just not like the feel of sitting on the loo. Right. Just how this, the, the, the toilet seat feels, just that feeling. They may not like they that. May, they just may not like okay. that. It's a sensory thing, okay. attach yeah. on their skin. Yeah. And that alone can okay. prevent them from wanting to sit on the loo. Okay. And as a result of that, they may be in nappies. Mm. But there are ways around these things. There are okay. ways of addressing each of these things step by step. Mm. And the book talks about toilet training, 
how you do it, you know, right from when they're young, how you involve everyone else around you. Okay. There are specific therapy related um, strategies which we use and those are shared in the book, in the book as okay. well, right. um, as well as what their teachers can be doing in school, specific routines, okay. which may, um, may, we... May. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So uh, the, the book, Autism and Living Series, Understanding Autism for Families, Friends, Professionals and Organizations, when is it uh, being launched? On the 5th of August, okay. this very Saturday actually, right. mm -hmm. at Christ the King um, Parish Hall mm -hmm. in Cantonment, okay. 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock. 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Yeah. Free, so just come. Yeah. Uh, okay, all right, so thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, so wait, so the name is not Hannah, it's Harriet. It's Harriet, yes. Oh, Harriet. It oh like sorry, Harriet. I, I mentioned, I mentioned you said Hannah. Harriet. I did, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> So on the 5th of August, on the 5th of August, the book is being launched. So go in your numbers. Uh, for those of you who would want to learn a lot about autism and how to handle um, a child or an adult with autism, uh, this book is perfect for you. So make sure that you find your way. Uh, it's between 2 to 4 p.m. Yes, 2 to 4 p.m. Harriet, thank you very much for your time. Viewers, this is where we end this conversation. Uh, make sure that you're getting interactive with us on our social media platforms my guest has been Harriet Iwa Agbenovu. Harriet, uh, finally before you go, um, what do you want to put out there? Um, um, I'd like to say that um, as a country, as a people, I think that this is a conversation that we should be having. Um, autism is a conversation that should be out there. There are a lot of children with autism being kept in homes and in rooms they are not allowed to come out of their rooms because parents do not know how to manage them when they take them out um, i want parents who have children with autism and other similar conditions to know that you are not alone mm. and there is support um, our organization sparkless foundation we are a charity that supports families and children um, on the spectrum so just google sparkless foundation you find out more about us we have an accra office and we work in different regions in the country country. If you need help, if you need advice, if you need support, if you want to know what to do to help your child, please reach out. There are lots of other organizations supporting children with autism. We have the Autism Awareness and Care Center um, in Accra here. We've got Autism BT Ghana. We've got Wawa too. We've got so many schools, the Joel is special schools. There, there are so many schools out there that will help and support if you reach out. You are not alone. Um, so please come out. Don't isolate your children give them the opportunity to shine and be a part of our community give them an opportunity to shine how are you guys thank you once again have a lovely morning we'll definitely come there to uh, support in the book launch